Hey guys, how are you? I wanted to make a quick video, um, sort, sort of as a follow-up to our terraforming stream on Saturday that last, lasted many hours. And I learned so much while doing that that I just wanted to share that experience with you. Um, you know, because why not? Uh, I was completely new when I started making this map on the stream uh, and I learned a lot in the process. First of all, I would, lo I would love to just quickly go over the tools because um, there, there's an important difference between all of them that you should bear in mind. First of all, this is, this is the shift tool. It's the, the most ba basic one, right? You move around, you're ra racing the terrain, uh, or you can use right click and it will lower it, right? And of course, you can change the size so you affect more or less, right? Usually, you always want to use this one. To be fair, you always want to use this one. You can try to use the other ones, but it's going to be too noisy. You're going to have to soften it later on. But um, you're probably going to be using this one and uh, usually with the strength you can actually have a little more control on it. Uh, so an example, I can do some, something like this and it looks kind of better, I have more time to do so. And of course if you're raising the terrain, it's going to be hard to then go back or behind it, right? You're not going to be able to do that anymore, right? I'm just making like two separate spots. So whenever you're working, you want to have a fairly, you know, a camera that is fairly uh, high or bird's view if you may. Um, so you can actually have better control on the terrain, but you know not too Perfectly on top of it. So you can actually tell the height of stuff. So you need to find a proper angle now The other tool that is important to bear in mind is the level tool and this is great So first of all you go somewhere right you right-click so you get you copy the terrain height You can see it right here. I right-click other areas and I will get different terrain heights And by the way if you hear thunders on the background, it's because it uh, just was a storm all day And I figure why wait any longer? Let's just make the video now anyways So I right-click this area right here, right? So I copy the terrain height and and then I just move around and you can see that it's always making level uh, go down or up to match that level uh, on the terrain, right? pretty handy um, you can actually set this manual if you want if you want to say I want to create a mesa of this height and I, that's actually what I did here I started like that you know like a 460 and I just went like okay this right and then I just started to move around and of course everything was gonna be at that height whenever I was done done so um, then of course you have the soften terrain tool um, and uh, it's pretty straightforward you take something that is quite noisy and then you just start to move it around and it's going to make it smooth I can leave it in one spot you can see how everything just smooths it up and um, you just uh, definitely want to just do it quickly if you still want to keep some of some of the um, details on the terrain of course, you know, there's a difference whether it's uh, a part of the map you are actually going to be playing and just background. Um, the background can be as noisy as you want, but if the player is going to be playing on, on that area, you definitely want, want it to be as smooth as possible. This tool is also great at doing so because you ensure that you right click here, you get 95 and then you extend that all over the place and you ensure that everything is at the same level, right? And whenever you have a difference, well, then make something cool you know to indicate that there is a difference in height as opposed to just leaving it like say like this right which just looks bad uh, you need to add a little you know more details so this can turn into this and I will show you how to do that later and of course um, there's a slope tool slope tool does exactly the same as the level tool however uh, whenever you left click it will just pretty much use the terrain, terrain height that it finds there um, but you can also set it by using the right click um, it doesn't really seem to actually take stuff there I don't know if this is even affecting it but basically what it's doing is creating a, a level at the area that you start on right and then it just tries to continue it but that height can be updated as you move it right you can see I can I can start like run down here then I can move it up here and it will create a new level up here right so it, it is not uh, like this that whenever I set a height is going to make everything at every spot the same height important difference I personally have been using just this or this when I just want to make really quick uh, changes on stuff right and this is this is nice that it sort of keeps updating with time um, now here, here's something water let me quickly show you water because water can be really troublesome so uh, first of all um, you definitely want to make uh, the higher spots higher level than the uh, sea level right if I we actually analyze how how, how tall this is uh, we're gonna see this is 20 you know 200 some, something like that 
and it goes down to like 50 here and then zero uh zero somewhere around here right almost zero well kind of zero so you get the idea right so you go ahead and place these water spawners and you want to make sure it, it can't spill all over right um, even if it shows other areas uh, marked as white, um, they're not gonna actually, you know, get water unless they can spill all over, like say here, right? But they're protected if they're like somewhere around here. Now the problem is that if you raise it too high, you're gonna see that that, that can actually spill over uh, other areas. So what I do is then place another water spawner that is at a lower level and basically a spawner that is um, below. Uh, water it will suck it in like an example if i take this lower you're gonna see water actually being see pushed down and being sucked by it right that's really important um so you don't you know actually um get everything spilled all over the place and you have more control on these important parts uh on the map on which you need water to be a certain level now what if you screw it up what if you do this or you just move turning around and then you just whoops sorry uh i want to go back no you can't now what is going to be spilling all over and definitely in your map there's a way to fix it what you do is you take the uh, c water level uh tool you take everything to the top make sure the speed is at maximum speed uh, so it just goes up faster and then you take it all the way down to zero bam now everything is dry and then you once again since you you cleared it all uh, when you did that then you take it back up and make sure there are no like white spots like you can see like right here right ensure there are no white spots whenever you rise it and there we go bam back normal okay so um, basically by taking it, uh, taking the water uh, sea level uh, really high, you're basically just absorbing all that water that was freely flowing around. It becomes part of the sea. So once you bring it back down, it just goes with it. But you have to take it all the way down, okay, to make sure it disappears. So the next thing is, well, um, I guess we can talk a little bit about the, the, the small features that you can add to the terrain. Uh, I found a really cool trick. So basically, um, this is this is when I really started to get the hang of it, or maybe the volcano. That that was also where I actually got the hang of it. Uh, I figured out how to do it. So this started like pretty much like this. To be fair, uh, I used this brush, and I just moved this around, like doing doing like this, something like this, right? That was pretty much it. And sure, this uh, looks more complex because I spent a lot of time on it. But uh, what you really want to do is is then one, once you have the shape of it, you can take the very same rise and sorry shift tool and bring it down to like 60 or 50 brush size which is pretty much the minimum and reduce the strength to somewhere about, about like 0 0.04 and that's when the magic occurs in example if you want to make like a crisp edge like I have here you just take this use the raise uh, tool that is the left button and then you just do it like this right and it's going to make it way crisper Right, you can do the same thing on um, on here. You can lower it with the right mouse button, right, and it's going to make it crisp. Right, looks so much better by just doing that, by just adjusting that. Then you can also use this tool, of course, the slope tool. Uh, you're gonna need uh, more strength always on this one, um, right? And you can create this little uh, little path that get formed along the way, and. You, you, you need to keep clicking all over the place to make sure you, you actually um, make it, you know, at different levels. Not just one straight line that goes straight, right? You want to actually to, to go up so it sort of meets with the terrain, right? And once we have this, we can go ahead and use this tool again. And we use the up uh, button, that is the left mouse button. Okay, we need to adjust again the, the strength to uh, 0 0.04. And it's quite unfortunate that we need to do that manually every time we switch uh, tool. But you get the idea, right? Okay, I actually overdid it. Smaller brush, brush size and no strength. There we go. And there we go. Now we're getting a crisper thing. And then we use the right mouse button to lower it on this side. So basically, whenever you have like the end of a cliff, you want to lower it. And whenever it's on the top, you want to raise it, right? That's how you sort of, sort of get this crisp effect. And of course, then there is these this veins that uh, they're more no noticeable here these veins right here on the you see this right so uh, that's also again this very same tool what I'm doing is just taking something like say here uh, we're gonna take this part and we are going to extend it 
right? Doing small motions. We're going to keep doing this over and over, right? We're going to take it all the way down here. We can make it um, We can make it split if we want. We can make it split this way, right? We, we want to we continue the terrain with, by doing this. And um, right, there we go, right? It's starting to look quite cool. And then you can use the right mouse button to actually lower the... Um, the the terrain somewhere like in the middle of this vein so i can do the opposite right it's going to basically increase the contrast uh of them right it's gonna get like a really cool shape going on here um and then we can increase it here right we can take it this way right and now it looks looks more realistic because you know nature is like that it has like it's not perfect we can rise it here if we want right you can see how it starts to get these little cool features and right we go we can lower it here right and we make it even more you know strong and it starts to become a more realistic thing and of course again we can do the little veins uh that sometimes hills have right we can take it here we we'll do it here and we just use the very, a very smooth um brush just the lowest uh, strength uh so we have a lot of control we we do this a lot of times right that's actually how you want to do it and of course i'm doing this you know fairly quickly and i'm not really paying that much attention but you get the idea uh, you get the idea then you use you use the um smooth tool to just ensure that you you know if you screw it up you actually fix it um but you also have to bear in mind the size i mean in this case you can't really build anything on here like this is an avenue right you can't build anything here um, so you need to put that in mind. I mean, I actually made this so people use a tunnel, right? That's really why I made it. On here, I expect people to actually build stuff, right? You can see actually, uh, like an avenue going by and many streets, uh, spawning the sites. Or even this area, I made it so, you know, you can make, uh, all this area right here, uh, maybe an avenue or what have you. You can make little houses on these sites, um, uh, you know, taking a look at the river and so, uh, sorry, the lake. That's actually a lake and so on so um yeah you, you always have to bear in mind that um let me show you somewhere that i actually got mistaken and actually well i'm not mistaken um pretty much nobody that makes maps actually pay attention to this but if i ever make another map i'll definitely do so take a look at this center area looks great right the problem is that i made it pretty much in the middle of four squares so you need to buy all four of them all right so you can actually use it if this was centered here you would only have to buy one so you actually need to bear in mind what's in each square, okay? That is not something that I started doing at the very beginning. That is something you should doing uh, should be doing the whole time. What's in each square and what are they gonna get whenever they move to one side or the other? That's more of like level design, but that's pretty much uh, also something that makes up a good map. So that is definitely something that I learned the hard way. And um, yep, um, you should definitely bear in mind whenever you start your own map. Um, then of course I uh, talking more about just aesthetics um, in this case uh, this this is the tropical themed uh, map so I of course have sand to play around with and so I pretty much gave sand whatever I, I feel fit you can see I made like really thin areas and then like super like thick ones and then even thicker and I made I made these little details right that I'm basically just pinching uh, and we're gonna increase the brush strength a little bit um, that's we need more right i'm using a small brush but you can see how see stuff like that just to to extend it uh and give it a little more detail i also made a really funny detail here that whenever you see it from the top it doesn't look that bad um so um you know just playing with stuff i i made a little, little bit of sand here uh you can see how in here there's a little river going through whenever well i don't move the water around I, I did it before for the demonstration so i guess this is oh yeah i, I totally screwed up uh oh uh oh uh oh <laughs> anyway um you get the idea well before uh whenever i loaded this this looked great uh, now i pretty much destroyed it but the point is um yeah that's um you know and you just learn through you know as you're doing this then of course you need to bear in mind that if you're gonna make a fertile uh, area you definitely don't want to put trees because the trees are going to sort of kill all the fertile area right same thing with uh, oil I think and so on because trees are basically um, a resource it's not that clear because the resources are here however trees are actually here and they're of different kinds um, 
So, um, and then of course there is the tree budget. You can see it's actually on the top and I actually paid a lot of attention to it. So you can see that as uh, I started to move away from, from the playable area, I barely added any tree. Trees are very expensive on this game because they are using full polygons to draw this. As opposed to just like a flat sprite looking at you like on SimCity. Um, so, you know, the farther it is, the, the less trees there is. Uh, just, you know, terrain is going to be there, so might as well give it a little shape. But trees can't, don't necessarily have to be there. And really, to be fair, if you're building here, does it really matter if there's a tree like there, right there? I'm going to add some right here. You can't even see them, right? So there's no point in having them. And you're actually counting towards that that, that tree. Can well, I mean, I actually can't see them because you can't spawn in there. I'm going to... I'm putting some there, but uh, you get the idea. It's not worth it. Um, so, uh, um, you d definitely don't want to views with the trees, right? You gotta bear that in mind. And of course, no trees where resources are. Okay, if you're gonna put in some resource, don't put don't put trees in there. Okay. Um, and uh, I would I would say that that is pretty much it. Uh, that is all I learned really. Um, this is how the map looks from the top. Uh, as a well just a flat image um you know and it's pretty fun really to make this so if you want to catch the stream and watch me working on this there's still a lot to be done here um definitely for sure i may actually even correct this uh it's going to take a long time to do so but uh i may actually want to correct this uh of course i can always just make corrections with this right i can always just take this image export it and then fix it on affinity designer photoshop or what have you and then bring it back in right and that's gonna be easier <laughs> because really you need these tools to sure see how it's looking but if you need to make a big change i guess you can just move the entire map you know or move a part of it just stretch it and then just come in into the game and make the finer adjustments so it looks good so um yeah, uh, you have to definitely bear in mind that whenever you come into doing uh, a map for City Skylines, it's not like SimCity 4. It takes a lot of uh, time and patience, there's a lot to be done, and actually if you can take the time to add these little details and these small little cozy areas on which you can actually build stuff and it will actually look cool, and you can take a picture and it's gonna look great from whatever angle you do so, then you're gonna have a really good map that you are, and maybe other people are gonna want to play on as well. I'm still learning, but I'm de I definitely know that for sure um, from level design in general, not just making maps for this. So um, yeah, that is pretty much it. I hope I see you on the stream. While I, when I continue this, make sure you follow us on Twitch to get notified or Twitter, uh, whichever works best for you. And um, then, of course, we're going to be having a little uh, PlayStation on, on well, a little long PlayStation on the map that actually we make for this. And uh, you bet you're astounding that we are going to be using this for the expansion pack because, I mean, this beach area, I mean, come on. But yes, that is all for now. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Oh, this is the most satisfying thing ever. We are God in SimCity 4. Wow, that was loud. <laughs> oh, you're gonna eat that, huh? You're gonna eat it. I see. What? Nothing. Okay. And now she is tossing that salad with her... Stop sticking your finger in your ear! All right, she's tossing the salad with her earwax. It does. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does it really well. Okay. Oh, they're coming for you, I, Pablo! I, shit, Run! Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. These road trips, man, are killing me. Anyway, let me know whenever we are recording. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Extended Play. I'm your host, this is Stuart, and that is a fancy, fancy sign. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.